Hello everyone, welcome back to this session. This session is going to go ahead and build on what we learned in the past two episodes and specifically the last one. And this is kind of continuation where we briefly touched about the SR header. So in this discussion, we'll go ahead and explore a little bit more on the how the SR header is being processed. And also we'll go ahead and take a look at some of the different various node types in an SRVV6 and what are their different roles. We're going to go ahead and briefly touch and we'll go ahead and expand some more into the details. Uh, we would be spending quite a bit of time in the SR header processing, so it just becomes important if you have missed the previous episode, just go ahead and you know revisit, go ahead and take a look at in that one. So before I go ahead and proceed further, just to quickly recap, if you hope you all remember, we had talked about the IPv6 SR header where we had discussed a few things in the header, like we had a source address, then a destination address. And the destination address used to be our active segment that is currently being processed. And then there were quite a few other information which were very helpful to us. Like if you recall, we had a first segment. We had the number of segments which are left actually. And if you recall, the segments were always encoded in the reverse order. That means the last segment index is zero, while the first segment index is your first segment. And active segment is the number of active segments kind of left into that one. So hope you all recall that. The reason I just reiterated because we need to really understand or remember those things before we go ahead and deep dive into this SR header processing. So with that, let's go ahead and quickly scroll down. And again, I'm referencing one of the Cisco Live presentation for this one. All credit to goes to these guys for putting, again, such a wonderful material out there. So now quickly uh, talk about, there are a few things. Again, if you just take a look at uh, this specific slide. So there is quite a lot happening in this specific slide. So if I have to just quickly highlight here. So you have a node where the node designation is A and A colon colon kind of really represents the an IPv6 address. And then A to B, B to C and C to D. So if I take a look at on this node A and this node A, it's being clearly called as a source node and this source node is your SR capable node means uh, this is a node, you know, where you have segment routing kind of capable node. We could also have the nodes where the SR is not enabled. We'll go ahead and take a look at that path. If the SR is not available, you know, unable to write where is not available on that node, SR information can be, you know, potentially added later on to that path. So both the options are available. So if I quickly take a look at on this node A, uh, there are quite a few things that are shown on the slide for node A. So we have our typical IPv6 error. So if you take a look at on this IPv6 error, we have a source address, which is your A's address, which is A colon colon. And your destination address is right now points to B colon colon, because that's how the next immediate hop that it needs to traverse. And then if I take a look at into the segment routing error, segment routing error, quite a lot of things going on here. If you see, we have this D colon colon, then comma, we have a C colon colon comma, then we have B colon colon, and then we have SL is equals to two. So hope they, now you remember why I kind of retreated on the previous one. So again, the segment list, just want to reiterate is the reversed order of your simple path basically. And the segment list zero is your simply the last segment. So this is the last segment, which is D. So that really indicates, okay, hey, if A is the source, then we are interested our actual destination is D because that's where your segment list is zero D colon kind of really indicates. So, so hopefully now you understand, you know, why we have this D, D really kind of takes, tells us, okay, hey, this is the destination that we are interested in reaching actually. Now the number of segment lefts are always equals to N minus one, which is your first segment. So in this case, the first segment would be your B. So that's where here it kind of clear this is the first is equal to two, that's your first segment and that's the reason you see the current destination address is B and that's what B is over highlighted over here. And similarly, the number of segment lefts are also equals to N minus one. So that's the reason you see here, segment list is equals to two here. Okay, and now your packet is kind of sent according to the IP, you know, which is your destination address and where you have pretty much your normal IPv6 forwarding happening. So that's what uh, quite a lot of things, you know, which are happening on this slide, but hope uh, it made sense, you know, why we have a D, which is again, you know, 
the last segment that's our actual destination and this is your first one and this is kind of you know uh, the number of segments kind of a left that's what where it says you know sl type is equals to two and hope you all recall what was the type for i'm not going to repeat it that's a quiz also uh, so hope you all remember what was the type for here and if i just scroll down on the second slide where it clearly says non transit sr node so if the node is not an sr capable node again we just discussed that okay before the reaching any of your destination let's say it could be before it reaches to b there is another node and that could node could very well be a non sr capable node in this case in that case it's absolutely not an issue as we indicated because the ip address of your destination still points to b and in that case uh, your SRH header will not be looked up at all, you know, before it kind of uh, reaches to your destination B. And that's where the uh, slide kind of clearly talks about. In that case, it's just going to be plain IPv6 forwarding, and it's based on just IPv6 destination address. And in that case, there is no good, not going to be any SRH inspection or any further update in that regards. Now, scrolling through further on that uh, slide deck, now this slide deck or this slide specifically talks about the SR you know segment endpoints. So if you take a look at here what it says the SR endpoints nothing but SR capable nodes whose address is in your IP uh, destination address. If you take a look at IPv6 header now your source was A but your active destination is a C because you are sitting right now on B or maybe on this uh, intermediary node. So the SR endpoints, so the nodes again, you know, which are kind of uh, capable, the SR endpoints is going to inspect your segment routing header and it's going to do a couple things as it kind of indicates here. That if segments left greater than zero, which was not the case earlier, we had two, uh, that means now we kind of reached over, if we, we are on B, that means we had earlier segment left two, now we kind of traverse one more, so segment list would be one. So that's what it says. If the number of segments are still greater than zero, then what do you do? You simply decrement your segments left. That's what we had to. We decremented by one. And then we updated the destination and address with the uh, you know list again. So in that case, now our active one becomes the C. That's what you see. The destination address again here is a C. And then simply forward according to the new IP in the destination address, basically. So now our new destination address is going to be C in that case. And why are we doing this? Because this node is an SR capable in node. That's the reason we are inspecting the SRH header. If it was not, as we discussed on the previous slide, it would be just purely based on the IPv6 forwarding. So at this point, simply the forwarding, you know, your forwarding logic or engine will take a look at whatever is in the packet and it will go ahead and forward it accordingly in uh, that specific case. Now, continuing on this one, now we have reached almost to the our destination address now that's where it says here okay the source was a the destination is d and now the number of segment lefts are practically zero that indicates that what we're going to take a look at again and here that's your active segment which your destination as d number of segment lefts are zero again sr endpoints sr capable nodes whose address is in the ip destination address if the sr endpoint inspects the srh that's what's going to happen again now we're going to take a look at if segments left greater than zero then we decrement the segments that's what happened here and then we updated the destination address now in this case the else now we has always looked at these now if your segment left is zero what that indicates now hey remove the ip and sr header and then simply go ahead and process the payload now in that case you will go ahead and bail, you know it all happens based on the standard ipv6 processing because that indicates that you have reached the destination and do whatever else needs to be done in that case there is no more SRH header left uh, to process. So again, a source node, a source node could be SR capable, non-SR capable. That's what we just kind of went through. And then we looked up, you know, how it is going to get processed at on the intermediary nodes. And then what happens once you reach to the final destination, you will not have any more segments left to process. In that case, just going to be standard IPv6 processing. Okay, so hopefully it made some sense to you that uh, how the SR we you know the header processing works you know. Now let's go ahead and quickly talk about some of the different type of nodes or the roles of the node in an SRVv6 network kind of. So we just talked about we looked up the header quickly. So that's what it says. Okay, each node along the SRVv6 packet path has a different functionality. A source node, as we saw in our 
this processing a was our source node d was our destination and then it traversed through some non-sr capable uh, node and then we had two sr capable nodes so with that a node that can generate an ipv6 packet with an srh i mean segment routing error an SRV v6 packet or an ingress node that can impose an SRV v6 header on an IPv6 packet. So simply the source node that can generate an IPv6 packet with a segment routing header or an ingress node you know, where it is receiving the traffic. This is the node that will go ahead and impose an S segment routing header on an incoming IPv6 packet. So that would be your source node. Like in our previous example, A was our source node. Then we had we have like something called this transit node, a node along the path of the SRVv6 packet, IPv6 packet, and SRH. The transit node does not inspect the SRH. The destination address of the IPv6 packet does not correspond to the transit node. And then we have the endpoint node, a node in the SRV6 domain where the SRV6 segment is terminated. The destination address of the IPv6 packet with an SRH corresponds to the endpoint so in our case that was the d now on this i want to expand a little bit more and you know give you a little bit more info and again for that you can go ahead and read the rfc rfc 8754 so just to quickly touch base again sr nodes there are different type of node that may be involved in your segment routing uh, sr source node that simply originates packets with the segment and destination address of the ipv6 header transit node that forward packet destined to a remote segment and an SR endpoint node that process a local segment in the destination address of an IPv6 address. That's what we saw like in our case A, D and some of the other nodes. So now just quickly expanding on the SR source node functionality. So an SR source node is any node, that's the important thing guys, that originates an IPv6 packet with a segment, okay? That is that segment we will simply call it a segment routing v6 sid okay we'll go ahead and you know spend more time on this one later on in the destination address of the ipv6 header the packet leaving the sr source node may or may not contain an srh okay that's what we had talked about earlier so this includes either a host originating an ipv6 packet or an sr domain ingress router is going to encapsulate a received packet in an outer IPv6 header, then you will have a followed by an optional SRH header. Okay. So again, now let's go ahead and talk about the transit node. Actually, a transit node is any node which is simply forwarding an IPv6 packet, where the destination address of the packet is not locally configured as a segment or a local interface. Okay. That means this is not not the node or not our final node. A transit node is not required to be capable of processing a segment. That means, again, we talked about your traffic could just simply go in that case, just going to be simple IPv6 based forwarding. Then we have our SR segment endpoint node. An SR segment endpoint node is any node receiving an IPv6 packet where the destination address of that packet is locally configured. That means this is our final node supposed to be receiving some of the things. So that'll be all for uh, today's episode. I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you.